that's always a sequence here. Seems to be sweeter. Oh. Hey, Marty yeah, Glickman. <laughs> Every back. week it's happening. It still happens. Yes. We're back. Hooray. For, I think we're on, I think it's episode 42 or 43. I'm lo starting to lose track. I think it's episode 42 and we're coming around. Spring is here in California. The it's birds right, it's are light out now. No, no need, sorry to brag a little bit, but I'm really happy today, everyone, because I got vaccinated, which is something I've been waiting for. No That's problem. good. Very good. No worries. You're not sick. You're not, um, the, the Hunger Games tracker is in you now, so they know where you are. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> all right. But I'm so ready for the show. Let's see if I can get, if I can remember all this. So okay. from Schaefer, Minnesota is Laura from Richfield, Julie, and from Edina, Marcy. Welcome, you guys, to KHOP 88. Hello. So Hi. Marcy joined us last, the, of the three of you, Marcy joined the, la the latest. <clears throat> I want you to run down your um, roll call of animals again, because that was a pretty impressive zoo you have there. Uh, <clears throat> starting with two dogs, three cats, and four birds. That's, that's fantastic. How many birds, so of, do, do the birds all stay in their cage all the time, or do, do you let them out, and do they fly around the house? I, they primarily stay in the cage. They have a okay. pretty huge cage, and, um, they have a room. They have their own room. Um, at the other end, now, we didn't get into this with Laura, but Laura lives on a farm in Sheffield. <laughs> It used to be a dairy farm. Do you still have animals on your farm at all? Well, we have chickens um, and cats, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> um, how, we many? Used to, how many? Well, we're down to four chickens because we don't kill them. They just get old and die of natural causes. So just four now. Just four chickens. Do you get fresh eggs, eggs every yeah. day? Or okay. Yep, nice. every day. <laughs> That's great. Julie, any pets? I have the two dogs and the one cat. That's pretty good. We're, we need to do this. Karen Kosky Hintermeister, who joins us many weeks, always wants the pets rundown. So, yes. um, so, <laughs> so that's for you, Karen. And how about um, you, Jason? I know that your spouse owns a pet store. Is that correct? That's correct. And how bad many do Bad dog Frida in Madison, Wisconsin. We just have one pet or one pet right now, one cat. And he, um, yeah, he's enough. And what's your, I forget what your cat count is. Too many cats. Does any, <laughs> please put in the comments if you would like me to send you one of my four cats. That's, no, you can't do that. We will drive him to you in our electric car. Force All right, so I, we should start with Laura because Laura, uh, Marcy and Julie both Gatewood, yeah, right? I'm remembering this right, Gatewood with me. Laura joined joined us in Hopkins in ninth grade, moved from New Jersey. Tell, how was that? So we've, we've had several people who have moved in when they were growing up. And the, the rumor always was that the older you are, the tougher it is to move to a new school. So how was it? And what do you remember your first impressions of, Showing up at West? Yeah. Um, I remember the fashion was over the top. <laughs> I came from a place, New Jersey, we had our own fashion. It's never quite in sync with the rest of the country. So it was the first time I saw people really in style as I did with magazines, like the teen magazines and the people with the swooped hair. That was really something I'd never seen, <laughs> the different layer, layers and lengths and it's kind of scary at first, you know, just to be thrown into that all of a sudden. Huh. So I had to change my style. It took me a while to get changed. I had to buy new clothes and babysit, and buy new clothes, and get my hair grown out because I kind of had a mullet at, at that time. But I got there. <laughs> yeah, wow. That is interesting. We've talked, we talked fashion with Brad Jones. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was well, fashion. Speaking, since we're going there, one of the few things I remember about Marcy is her 
worked very short hair in high school. And if you don't mind, you can pass on any of these questions, people, but do, what, did you always have short hair, Marcy? Um, well, so I was an ice skater at one yeah. point, mostly in junior high. And so for ice skating back in the day, um, you either had really long hair that you could pull back or you had really short hair. Okay. And so I had really short hair probably because of that. And then it was kind of the vibe in high school that, you know, either you were going to have like big hair, go big or go home, or <laughs> you were going to have like the punky hair. Yeah. And so I think I just fell into like the more of the punky hair. Yes. I remember it fondly, positively. Yeah. <laughs> you do. And Julie, do you have any memories of, high school or junior high fashion or hairdos? Oh, you know, I think I'm still washing hairspray out of my hair from high school. Really? <laughs> oh, you know, I have the world's thickest hair. Okay. And, you know, I'm pretty sure it's still stuck in there. It's the hairspray. horrible, you know. Aquanet. Yes. <laughs> See, Marcy and I used a lot of Aquanet when we were on dance line together. Oh, that's right. Dance line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's the first dance line princess to join us. No, we have a we had one other person. Well, I recall that Olympic ice skater um Jill Trenery was from our area and she yeah. had that sort of swoopy short uh hairdo as well. Um she was that she was like the most famous person from near us. You would see her at Minnetonka Ice Arena every once in a while. That's right. Um, Okay, so fashion though, um, just that's interesting that um, that the pressure was on. I would say from just giving, just I'm going to chime in just for a second with the male perspective here. Sure. What you wore in high school was definitely like I wouldn't say judged necessarily, but people paid attention. Mm -hmm. Considering all that, all we wore were like flannel shirts and jeans. So we, I wouldn't say we were under as much pressure as you guys were, but yeah, I mean, come to think of it, like girls did, it was, it was pretty like name brands were a thing. There was, it was a pressure thing, right? It was, um, yeah. it, was it tough? Did it make, make growing up tougher in our, in our school? Well, anyone, anyone can, can chime in or avoid it. I think um, it, it was, you know, it took me a while to get get the clothes I needed. And then my sister, when she moved here, she had a big pile of clothes in her bedroom of different girls from the school would just drop off clothes and pick up clothes. So I was able to be part of that pile after a while so that I could um, share my clothes and I could see uh, somebody wearing my clothes down the hallway, but that was fine because I was wearing somebody else's clothes. So that was kind of nice. Yeah. Well, I, I re once in a while, my daughter who's 14 says, can I please, she said it the other day, can I please wear fishnet stockings to school? And so Marcy and I, like, we had to wear fishnet stockings to high school every once in a while. Yeah. And so I had to be honest with Clive. I'm like, oh, sh okay, sure. My 12-year-old wears fishnets to school by, by choice. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. And so, Julie, I know I did a little research before the show started. So, were, am I correct? Were you in band? I was. What did you play? Did you have to wear fishnet stockings in band? I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. no. What did I you play? Not. I played flute. You played flute? Mm -hmm. And did you, were you just in the concert band? Were there any like band uniforms? Do you have to wear any uniforms in high school? We did. Jason is over there shaking his head. What did you um, hear? Do you um, want to talk about this, Julie? Because it's kind of a funny, I think now that you mentioned, it's kind of a, sort of a funny aspect of our high school band. Tell us um, what you remember about those band uniforms. Well, so we were the transition group. So we started off with tan pants or tan shorts for our summer uniform and windbreakers. <laughs> yeah, for the summer uniform when we would get to march for the parades and stuff. And 
let's use the term marching loosely. Yeah. Um, and then um, they ordered actual uniforms for us, but I don't remember whose brilliant idea it was, but they ordered them in white. Um, so we yeah. really couldn't like, they wouldn't allow us, Jason, I don't know if you remember this, but Mr. Bates wouldn't like allow us to like basically move once we had these uniforms on. It's like, stand still, you're not allowed to drink, you're not allowed to move, you're not, because yeah. they had to be dry cleaned. And they were hot as heck. Yeah, um, and they were, um, they were flashy. They were like royal blue and white and- yeah. um, And there was actually, I will tell you this, Jason, there's actually um, one of them still hanging in the band room to this day. <laughs> I uh, bet. How do you know this? Have you been hanging out in the band room? I, I did until COVID hit. Yeah, I play in the Hopkins community band still. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, which actually rehearses in the band room at the Hopkins High School. Wow. How, yeah. is, it, is it still basically the same? I mean, there's not much they could do with it, right? They, um, they actually painted over the mural about five years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was, there's a, there's a few of us that um, throughout the years had played in the high school bands. So there, that was a kind of a, a tough pill to swallow when you walked in that fall and the mural had been painted over. Yeah. Uh, but they've done a lot of um, different expansions and stuff um, and expanded a couple of the hallways back there. And... Um, like everything else at the high school, they they just they've made some changes that are really nice. They have a really nice wall that has pictures of different musicians and stuff that have um, gone pro. Oh, cool! Really, it's it's a it's really nice. So, um, just like um, Chris Bates, Julie um, Setzer, um, just a whole bunch of. A whole bunch of them, but those are the two off the top of my head that I, I remember. You know, but I remember. You know, one night I was on a break and just looking through that, and um, it was just really fun to see. You know, the different pictures of people that we went to school with and people that we um, were ahead of us and behind us that we might have known uh, had turned pro. Marcy. Just one more thing on those band uniforms, and then we'll get off of it. Okay. But the Do thing about the Marcy? band uniforms were the the jackets were short, so when you played, like it, the the jackets pulled up. So as a result, the pants came up to like here, and they yes. had these like white suspenders, and then these blue uh -huh. pants up to here. And because the jackets were white, it was always like take the jacket off, take the jacket off, take the jacket off. So you walk around with these goofy blue clown pants and spats and yeah it was bizarre um it was really funny and those blue those blue windbreakers were not cool either um no no a lot of problems did you have a hat a oh yeah yeah like a tall marching hat yeah like a little boxy number uh, yep cool poofy thing they could stick in the top um, oh my gosh that was so cool <laughs> it was not cool no. <laughs> Yes. Um, no. All right, we'll check in with our crew here. See now, um, Jim Sexton is abo is aboard. He could tell us about his his uh, experience with the marching band uniforms. Chad Alt, of course, is here. Stacy Semler, uh, Chad Alt, celebrating acid wash jeans with us um, tonight as part of the fashion update. Um, and Tony Shink was in briefly, um, and I don't think we've heard much from Tony. So good to see you, Tony. Um, we have a uh, question for Julie from Chad. He's wondering if you were part of the Annie Get Your Gun Orchestra. Did you play no, in any of those not. musical orchestras? Okay. No. That was always like Dawn Witt or Amy Longbala. Yeah, okay. That oh. sounds right. We'll have to get them on the show. Um, so, Marcy, I have a follow-up question for you about Edina. So, do you have students, do you have 
children in the high school district? Are you in Edina School District or Hopkins? We're in Edina. So I have a, a eighth grader at, no, I've got, so I have a sixth grader at Valley View. I have an eighth grader at Groves. And then I have a ninth grader at the high school. Oh, you're busy. We're busy. Many cats, many pets, many yeah. dogs. Um, well, we're going to have a dance line show. So, um, do we, how much of the dance line do we want to get into tonight? We don't have, no, we don't have, I am going to talk with Marcy maybe tomorrow about it. Okay. It's going to be hard to find these people, uh, but I'll ask Marcy, are you in touch with any dance line people? Um, no, but I may know how to get a hold of some. I have a line on Andrea Haskvitz. Okay. Um, and then Mary Leighton admitted she was on Dance Line with us for a year. So, Dance Line Saga. There's Chris Michelle, and I'm friends with her. Oh, really? Um, yeah, on Facebook. Hey. Um, yeah, and Chris was in band. Jackie Nemechek. Okay, well, we'll rope you all in. So other than, other than the fashion pressures of just being a young woman in Hopkins High School, other than Julie had to wear the band uniform, Marcy had to wear the dance line uniform. Laura, did you ever have to wear any weird clothes that were, okay. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was in gymnastics all through high school, the team. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I had to wear the leotard, and that was half the battle, and... Yeah. It was other half of the battle, probably. <laughs> what was your event? What was your best event? Um, balance beam. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So it always turned out I was the first person up on, val on balance beam. And that was my spot. So that was the pressure, the icebreaker, you mm. know, to get up there first. So it's still giving me anxiety just talking about it <laughs> right now I don't want to yeah. trip that too much but what was the <laughs> what was like the move that you had to do that you had to nail like the make or break like this is going to go well or this is not going to go well if depending on how this move went yeah let's see um I did a um a, a Valdez with one hand where you're sitting down and then you just end up doing a backflip somehow from that position. And um, yeah, that was a big one. That was a, a unique one that I had. So <laughs> that's so cool. That is cool. We've talked about this a few times because there are, there are some things that, that we, people in our class obviously did when we were young, but then also things that we've observed our kids doing or other, our friends' kids doing that mm -hmm. I find to be like, I can't believe that kids make it through these things. Mm -hmm. Spelling bee is one of them, I think. Um, you know, uh, standing at the free throw line in front of everybody or pitching a baseball or a softball game. Mm -hmm. But gymnastics has to be ex like probably even worse. Like you're there by yourself and you're trying to do something really acrobatic and athletic. And boy, the margin yeah. for error is very. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's on the list, I would say, for sure. <laughs> Do you have kids, and have any of them become gymnasts? Um, I have two kids. Um, my daughter's 10, and my son is 13. And so they do different sports, but my daughter does, doesn't want to do gymnastics anymore. She's moving on to volleyball, and they do karate now. <laughs> oh, Awesome. <laughs> Well, that's good. I mean, Marnie, I think that's a pretty good collection of uh, potentially embarrassing photos if you take into account the band uniform, the dancing <laughs> uniform, and the gymnastics uniform. For, for As you know, everyone, we do not intend to embarrass anyone that's on right. the show. That's right. But we can embarrass teachers. So let's talk about teachers. Are there any teacher stories you would like to share someone who you want, you know, remember well, or any teachers that, I don't know, bugged you? Do you remember any teachers at all? I had, a, I had a favorite teacher, I think, um, Monsieur Bouchard. 
Oh, yeah. Friends so we're, yeah. And what do you remember about him? Uh, I remember um, he had nicknames for a lot of the students. Uh, I remember that uh, he just had a great sense of humor. He liked to use music. I remember him bringing in the um, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover in French song. And he just sat there and cracked up while he was playing it. He wore, did, he wore a suit every day. Yes. I remember that. Did he have a nickname for you, Marcy? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he didn't. <laughs> And Marcy, did you go on any trips to France? I did. Um, I, I took Spanish for a year, and then I switched over to French. So I, I actually didn't take French with our class. I took it with um, that, what, 80, 80, 80, 89 graduates. And so I went on the French trip with that group. And it was a wonderful time, wonderful experience. That's great. Chaperone part, or were you, since you graduated? Um, no, I went my senior year. Oh, you were senior year? Yeah, their junior year. Oh, okay. So. Laurel, who's your, who's the teacher that sticks out for you? I, I'd say my homeroom teacher, <laughs> not a, I had Mr. Noreen for homeroom, and um, I, he inspired me to run, so I started running, um, long distances just on my own because I know he was a marathon runner so that yeah I'd never heard of anyone doing that before so I learned about that and then um I had him for English too so I liked um he we had to write personal stories one one time and he wrote he wrote a story that he read to us first and it was about himself being a finding out at the age of 51 that he was adopted. Hmm. So it was just interesting. And then we all wrote personal stories and he wanted us to share them. And then after he read them, he said, these are way too personal. Let's just forget that part about sharing them. <laughs> so <laughs> makes you wonder, but yeah, I, I enjoyed English. And um, I liked all the math teachers too. They were helpful. Hmm. I remember that too about Noreen, um, Laura because I had him for English as well. Maybe we were in the same class. Oh, yeah. and, I rem and I remember that that he was he was struck by the papers that came in by yeah. how many people shared really, really personal um, individual stories. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a mellow guy, but um, I remember him as being a very good teacher. Yeah. Julie, who's, your, uh, who's the teacher that sticks up for you? Well, I have, a, I have a couple of them, and Laura, I mean, you just reminded me of Mr. Noreen and um, the writing portion of it, but um, obviously Mr. Bates was, I mean, Jason, let's face it, I mean, we had him for how many years? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he, uh, he, had a, he had a strong influence on my life, um, just as far as music goes, and music is still a, a a strong pull for me and um but Mr. Saturn and again I had Mr. Saturn in junior high and again in high school and um what he taught me about writing and just appreciating literature and books and stuff is to this day amazing. Mm. Yeah, cool. You know, I looked up Saturn because he's come up in a couple of of couple of these shows because he's he was the yearbook advisor and we had him at West. So several people had him, you know, maybe three or four different classes, you know, over the course of six years. And um, he wrote a really cool thing for the Star Tribune about his cabin, which sounds like an amazing uh, place. But um, yeah, he was one of our sort of cooler teachers. He played college hockey at Hamlin, I think. Um, but anyway, hmm. Saturn, we might have to look him up because he's one of the, like some of these guys, some of these people that we've called favorites are not with us anymore. Mm -hmm. Don Bates is still around, right? Yes, he is. Improbably, considering how much he smoked, um, that uh, he seems to be chugging along just fine. And uh, 
Um, so Saturn's still around. Surprisingly well, actually. <laughs> Good. One of Mr. Bates's sons, I forget which one, is like a hot shot, like Boney. He's with. He's involved in that band Boney Vare, the big Eau Claire area. Um, anyway, he's got indie music. One of his sons is actually um, on the new Taylor Swift album. Yes, that's him. Yeah, JT yeah. is it JT? JT. Yeah, he's yeah he's getting it done. Oh. Um, well, we don't have too many questions from our crowd here. Um, and, and I'm surprised that Jim Sexton isn't weighing in on his band uniform thoughts. Um, <laughs> what the other, the other stock question that we have, and we'll just go back to you, Julie, is are you do so aside from playing in the, maybe not playing in the, in the community band, have you picked up any hobbies during the, the pandemic that you weren't doing before? So... I picked up a couple. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the community band is actually still rehearsing. We rehearse via Zoom. How's that go? It's very odd because you can't hear anybody else. Yeah. Funny. So it, it, it's extremely odd, but at least it gives you a chance to still play. Mm -hmm. uh, but I joined a group on Facebook called Yes Fit, and it's virtual races so you do it at your own pace and it's running um and i had taken up running a few years back and um there are various distances you choose and you choose how how you complete them and and how long it takes you to complete them and um so i've been doing that um because the gym is not an option for me. Yeah. So um, I've been doing that. And then um, I was encouraged by some friends to start a blog. And so I started that back in August, I think it was. And I try to publish weekly. And sometimes it's just random thoughts. And sometimes, you know, the cats, the cat and the dogs are the topic. Okay. And <laughs> Marcy, there's a cat. Oh, you can see. And Julie, what is the website of, for your blog so we can all check it out, please? Writingforfun.blog. Oh, cool. Thank you. Writingforfun.blog. I'll check Are it out. Are you enjoying that exercise? And have you, like, have you done that kind of writing? Have you kept journals or, or that kind of thing? I, throughout or? It actually came from, honestly, Jason, I stepped out of my comfort zone a couple of years ago and sat down and wrote a book. Oh. And it, in, pro, in the process of editing the book um, and looking at self-publishing, um, because I just don't want to try to pedal through publishers and stuff. Um, and when I was furloughed last year, um, I started just writing some daily, just random pieces and a couple of people are like you really need to start either a podcast or a blog and I'm like eh, I don't like how my voice sounds so blog it is and it took me another couple of three months to even get to that point well thank you for sharing that with us yeah that's very cool yeah Laura share the website of your blog if you'd like but uh, also tell us what else you're up to <laughs> I have to, done some writing. I joined a writing group a few years ago be, before the pandemic. Nice. And then I haven't done it for a while. I'm just studying for medical coding. But yeah, I've done some writing. That's want to get back to that. But um, I've um, planted a lot of flowers over last summer when it all was going on. Um, we used to just do vegetables, but I started doing flowers. And I think I like that better. Hmm. Fun. So, so do you have when you're living on a farm do you so do you have a garden that you sort of keep separate that's just kind of for you and the family yeah just a okay. vegetable garden and um but last year I helped with the farm across the street not just ours because every year I have to pick rocks and that's that's my main job on the farm I get a shovel and I you know if it's anywhere above 10 pounds you have to put it in the in the back of the ranger and haul it off somewhere. So I picked extra rocks last year. 
Um, and we that doesn't sound very exciting, but yeah, something we got to do. <laughs> Clear sure. the fields. Yeah. What's the pride of your garden, vegetable or flower? Do you have something that you're like, oh yeah, we that that's the best thing I've put yeah, out. Yeah, I planted ro a rose bush last year, so hopefully it lived through the winter. So I'm, if that lived, I'm going to plant more roses. Wonder that can be um, somewhat obsessive, I'm told. Uh, a guy <laughs> in my neighborhood has oh, yeah? rose bushes, and they are beautiful. They grow up the side of his house. Um, oh. And I, you know, like he would never enter them in any sort of prizes, but they're, they're beautiful. And he's mm -hmm. very particular about them. I know it's. I, I could see that happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marcy, your turn. I wish I had a green thumb. I kill absolutely everything that I try to grow. It's just, <laughs> Me too. It's, it's so sad. Except <clears throat> your pets. Yeah. Yeah. Except, Sorry. except the pets. But um, I guess during COVID um, or during all the shutdowns, um, well, backing up, we, we just moved back to Minnesota about three years ago. So we're kind of still trying to get our feet wet and trying to still get the kids acclimated. Um, so that's been a process. Um, personally, though, um, some things that I've picked up, um, I'm like obsessed with Kendall Ray these days. And I don't know if anybody knows anything about her, but she has a kind of a, um, she's like a YouTuber or a, or a persona that has a lot of unsolved mysteries or sometimes they're solved mysteries. And um, don't start because you'll, I mean, it's really hard to put down. So that and probably uh, virtual Lisa Loeb concerts. Whoa, wait a sec, Lisa Loeb. Yeah. That's a name from the past. We are, um, I actually, um, I am, our family's, our family is friends with her oldest brother and his family. And so I got to meet Lisa through that connection. And I actually, um, at one point, put together a concert, a charity concert. She has a charity called Camp Lisa, where she, um, it sends kids to overnight camp. And so um, I was able, when we lived in El Paso, Texas, to put together a concert where she came and played all of her kids' songs. And um, yeah, and we've just, yeah, I've kind of kept in touch with her since. That's cool. So yeah. these, I, I have some friends, I can't do it, but like, I just because it, for whatever reason, watching like the live concert experience on TV even, it just bums me out. I really like to go to concerts and I'm like, I don't want to, I don't know, whatever. I'm weird about it. But what, so, but I'm, a, I'm familiar with now these, the way they do these virtual concerts has really sort of evolved during the pandemic. And they're, in some cases, they're really interactive. Is that how hers uh, go? Yeah, somewhat, yeah, I would say. And then um, they've been in her home, so her kids are running around and, you know, it's just really informal, but it's, it's been more, um, I don't know. It's it's kind of been a highlight when you can't really get out and go many places. And I know things are changing, hopefully now. But yeah, yeah so um, I think different people have done different things to just try to connect and very appreciated. Cool. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, before Marnie tells us who's coming up on KHOP 88, yes. uh, did any of you want to cover anything or did you think that we were going to talk about something that we didn't get to tonight? Or did you have questions for one another or anything, any uncovered territory? Speak now. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, I'm maybe ready. think about it. And yes. if you, you're, we're not going to be, yeah, we won't cut you off. But Marnie, who's, who's coming up next on the show? Well, I have the list pulled up. Fantastic. Episode 44 next week, Eric Kowalsa. Mm -hmm. March 30th, we have the ski team show with co-captains Glenn Johnson and David Green. Downhill ski, that is. Oh, I'm sorry. Downhill Just ski. saying. Alpine. Just saying. April 6th, Bonnie Blader and Mystery Guests. April 13th, the softball team. April 20th, Katie Keene and Pals. May 4th, Jim Keenan and Brian Olson. May 11th, the football team. 
May 18th, my 50th birthday party, Bring Your Own Cake. And the last show I've scheduled this episode, <laughs> I'm sorry, 56, Linda Schneewind and Carrie Silvernagel. We got, wow. we got a lot going on, Jason. We're ro roaring into year two. Roaring into year two. That's mm -hmm. going to be amazing. I can't Yes, it is. Yeah, we're, we're zeroing in on 50. That's uncharted Sorry. territory. Definitely. <laughs> well, it's been so great to see all three of you. Is there any last words you want to share? Thanks for what you're doing. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm, my brother was a year older. He was in K-Hop, I think. With well, that's both. right. So he told me to give you a shout out. And then he brought up your K-Hop leader, Eric somebody. I wasn't in K-Hop, but I think he was in K-Hop and you had a teacher or a leader or director named Eric someone. We're going to have to look that up. I remember the dude who was in charge of K-Hop, and I can't remember his name. He thought my brother still speaks so very highly of him. So um, really impacted his life. I guess he was a teacher that just really, really connected with students. And so anyway, well, shout I, out to me. I appreciate that. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's kind of embarrassing. We haven't actually been reading up on our K-Hop friends and the teachers and we had a classmate volunteer to like dig into the old k-hop 20th century archives for us so jason there's a lot to do in your two you know marcy just you mentioning your brother just brought back a total blast from the past just now and here's my memory we were at joellen krupp's house yeah. she had some sort of a party and your brother's band played they got out of the basement and they played. I can't, I can't remember their name, but um, it was pretty great. <laughs> they played like songs we recognized, which we were in like seventh grade, right? It blew me away. Yeah. Cool. You too. Uh, all right, you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank to everybody you. for tuning in. I think, you know, Troy Finn isn't with us tonight, and he usually is. Uh, Minnesota's playing Wisconsin in college hockey right now. And I know that's why Doug Robertson isn't with us. So are you <laughs> still screening, Jason? Can I'm not. Play? I was okay. checking the score, but I'm not gonna I know. I would never. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. Just joking around. See you next Tuesday. Be safe, Marcy, Be safe. Laura, Julie. Take care.